Sharon. Sharon. Situation. Was it from a 911 call from a faculty or staff member or from a student? Can you just expand well, on that sure since they got here sure. within minutes? Could you also expand on why it was a female faculty member walking around looking for this student minutes before he shot up the school? No. Can, can y'all clarify answer that? that? Answer. I'll let Director why Hosey the answer that question. The resource officer didn't approach look, him. Look, ma'am, let, let's get this question right here and then we'll come you back. You asked how well. they notified? Yeah, I, we, we discussed today, heard earlier, law enforcement here within several minutes. So we're just curious uh, how the notification went through. Did 911 hear about it from a student or was it a faculty that made that call uh, uh, alerting law enforcement? All of our teachers are armed with a uh, form of an ID called Centegix. And Centegix alarms us and alerts the law enforcement office after buttons are pressed on an ID and it alerts us to, that there is an active situation at the school for whatever reason and that was pressed and we've had that about a week now. And we've heard stories of students actually pulling other students while they were in the hallway while all this chaos is happening while shooting is going on. We've heard um, stories about students pulling their classmates into the classrooms to get them to secure, to get them to safety. What do you think that says about these, these young folks who are you know, very 13, 14, 15 years old that they're looking out for one another like that. That's admirable. It's like Director Hosey said, we have heroes among us and those students and teachers that did that today saved a lot of lives. This could have been a way worse than what we, and again, the investigation is still trying to file through those that information, but those kids are, are heroes and brave as well to do that when they hear an active shooter around them. Sure, well, we talked about let, the let me Let me get this one question right here. Did you have something else, ma'am? No, it was me. Okay. I was asking why did the school resource officer not go looking for this kid and approach him and why they sent a female faculty member to the room, to the algebra room he was in with my daughter, looking for him instead of the school resource officer or why the school allowed this boy to come and go from the class all the time. He would go and sign up for the, the restroom pass, leave the class and come back sometimes and sometimes never come back. He with, has been wandering this school. For with, with all due respect, ma'am, I think your information is incorrect and our investigation is going to lead to what we have and we will be glad to answer your questions once that's done. I guess victims are lying to me then. Possibly. So what can you tell us about the SROs? You talked about a lot of heroes. You talked about how one of the SROs encountered the shooter. What can you tell us about them, who they are, how long they've been working here, and what they did today? Both of the SROs that are here at, at these high schools, or all of my high schools, I have two there. Both of the SROs, to include a third one, was here today, not for any other reason other than to help and assist today. Uh, they're the true heroes as well. They were actively looking. They had an alert, I guess, if you will. And when they interjected or when this shooting began, they interacted with the shooter, Mr. Gray. And as soon as they made contact with him, he gave up immediately. Can you share these officers' names? Uh, not at this time. I'd rather not. Sure. Well, where is the shooter right now? You said in custody. The shooter is in custody at the Bear County Detention Center because he is a juvenile. He's being booked in and he will be transported to RYDC. Were officials or school administrators tipped off by a threat here before the shooting happened? I'm not aware of that at this time.